And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode number 125. Well, when I recorded 124, I was like, I'm going to do these back to back, bang, 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 bing, bang, boom. And of course, that didn't happen <laughs> because <laughs> life of a janky. I've been uh, working on my studio here. But lucky enough, and thank you to Cousin Scott, who's about to celebrate a birthday, so you can uh, chime in your uh, happy birthdays, Feliz Cumpleanos to Cousin Scott. Some of you have seen him in the Rise of the Fiat videos, uh, his Cadillac XLR re we reviewed here. Uh, he, he made a comment to me one time saying, why don't you ever archive these posts, and then you know you can always get to them later if they, if they sell. And I said, well, that is a great idea. However, I like to get them when they're fresh, when they're actually active. So if you watch it right as it comes out, you can go check out the listing for yourself and maybe even buy the Aerostar. These ones, however, I did. I took his advice and I archived these just in case because they were so good that I couldn't pass them up and I needed to create an archive just in case they sold. I figured they would sell quickly. And with all the stuff going on, sometimes you just can't get to it in real time. So we are doing a sort of janky, weird, quirky archive thing. I'm still working out the best way to format this, however, um, the Aerostar in question will more than make up for it, I hope, for the weird formatting, so I apologize for that um, right off the bat. So, let's get to it, shall we? Here we have a 1988 Ford Aerostar Passenger XLT minivan, listed for $6,000 in Everett, Washington. Now, I had a couple people send this to me. I believe Ronnie, the great Ronnie, sent this to me. And uh, sorry, it's been so long. But, uh, and then I, this one actually popped up on a couple of Instagram accounts, not even Aerostar accounts, just like cool Craigslist cars or whatever it was. Um, some of these aggregators, of which I am one. And so it was kind of, kind of made the rounds on the internet and, and just because it is so dang clean. So we should probably get right into it. You can see this stunning and I'm gonna have my zoom, zoom feature with my left hand, my mouse and my right hand so we'll see this goes. But we'll just give you a nice uh, little full screen image of this just striking Aerostar. It's in this white and it almost looks like it might be even like a, a slight cream with these brown bumpers. Never seen a, a color scheme quite like this, especially those brown bumpers. I have to believe they're, they were like that from the factory and you know the the, the 80s Aerostars, the early Aerostars, they did some funky things with them, um, as we see. So, uh, I have to skip now because I have to go to the last page here, because that was the only screen grab I did, which actually, and of course, my screen grabs are in the shot, because sometimes the screen capture gets weird, so you can see it says screenshot right there, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, we'll work with what we got, and these are beautiful copies of the owner's uh, uh, manuals, the owner's guide. Um, they change them every year, and I do have to, I have to say I like the 1988 version with this Aerostar in the script format. Um, of course, you got your little buckle up icon there. Um, so you have like, like your operating owner guide and then the third book, I don't know, maintenance, something like that. All the things that came new with the Aerostar. So that is very cool. Okay, let's read the description. I guess I should do about this vehicle first. I apologize. I'm, I'm thrown off by the format here. Driven 132,074 miles. And that's always a double-edged sword. Like, um, you know, it's been driven a lot of miles, which is kind of a good thing because it's been run, and yet it's so clean and, and pristine that that only makes the cream puff nature of the Aerostar even more impressive. The fact that not only did someone maintain this vehicle for that long, but they maintained it while driving it, which is absolutely insane that you could put 130,000, you look at the average car with 130,000 miles on it, and it will look nothing like this Aerostar. So, you know, a 20,000 mile Aerostar is very, very cool, but sometimes those Aerostars have sat for a while, you know, like a lot of the internals are gonna be need to be refreshed. So there's something to be said, actually, for a higher mileage used vehicle if, you know, everything else, the interior and all that has been preserved like this one has, garage kept, yada, yada, yada. But the fact that there's so many miles on it means like, you know, usually everything's going to be kind of in running order. The worst thing you can do is not drive them. Okay, so uh, manual transmission, exterior color off-white, seemingly confirming our uh, visual inspection that it looked kind of like a cream. Interior color brown. 
Fuel type gasoline, one owner, ding, ding, ding. I mean, a one owner vehicle for all these miles. The vehicle's paid off, let's hope so, and it's got a clean title. So seller's description, five speed manual, all caps. <laughs> and that is what we should lead with here. 132K, runs like new. This baby has been taken care of its entire life, most of which was in a garage. Well, most of, the, most of which, except for the 132,000 miles they managed to rack up. But again, on a vehicle that's, you know, uh, 98, 2008, 2018, over, you know, 30, almost 36 years old. Um, incredible. The rear seat belts might need to be replaced since the family dog back in the early 90s chewed them up. Not them, but um, E-M, chewed them, um, chewed them up. Overall, excellent condition. Needs a stereo. <laughs> One family owned vehicle. Short and sweet, a great description. I mean, the pictures really do say it all, this one. The fact that it's a one owner, the fact that it's a manual transmission. I mean, the family dog chewing up the seat belts, that's almost like, yeah, of course you'd like to have the original nice seat belts, but that almost just adds a little bit of lore um, to the van itself. and almost endearing bit of uh, a jank on there. So we've seen the first photo here. I'll try to zoom in. Now 88, you know, is the, would be the third year of the Aerostar. It's right before some of the minor changes would come. It's right before the, the extended version and the all wheel drive were introduced. So this is like the last year of like sort of the original incarnation of the Aerostar. And it has some very cool features. I like this little basketball hoop in the background too. Actually very similar to uh, a hoop in a painting I did that features an Aerostar in it. Perhaps you've seen it in the background, not the main one, but the sort of secondary one. And that painting is not here right now, actually, because it's going into an art show. And we'll talk about that more later on Janky AF. But for now, I like that rounded basketball uh, hoop, but I'm getting sidetracked here. Okay, next picture. Look at this interior. I mean, poof, my carpets in my 86 are pretty good, <laughs> but nothing else in, in the air even comes close on the 86 to the condition of this and garaging it really is the difference because any car that sits outside it's just gonna it's just things are gonna happen to it the fact that this was so meticulously maintained and yet has the amount of miles it does on it. i mean look at the seats you know my my green arrow star only has i think 119,000. now less than that somewhere around 119,000, 110,000. And, you know, this, the, the driver's seat, as is, you know, normal to happen, will sort of, you know, start to kind of fall apart, apart. and uh, there's kind of a hole in it and it needs to get patched and probably some padding needs to be put in there. I, th I attribute this to actually the vinyl seats. Now, my um, 86 Aerostar has the vinyl seats, but with the big um, fold over, it's like, the, it's like the normal Aerostar style seat, the passenger style seat but it is in vinyl. I've never seen another one like that. But again, they were doing all sorts of weird things in the 80s with these vehicles. These have the bucket seats. Uh, my buddy Evan's 1986 Aerostar, which I sold to him, has these bucket seats in blue, and he has a blue interior, very stunning. But I love these seats because you could take, you could say these seats came out of a 1960s Ferrari, and someone might believe you. I mean, they're just like a classic vinyl seat, but they have this, um, you know, no headrests. It's these little cool bucket seats. This is a this is a seat you would see in like a sports car in the 60s. And so I think it's so cool. I, I always love comparing the Aerostar to a sports car because especially with the manual transmission, you have manual transmission, rear wheel drive. I mean, those are the essential elements of like a great, um, you know, a classic runabout sports car. And with these little bucket seats here with no headrests on them, now I'm sure for safety purposes and all that, um, you know, things have been updated in the modern era, but you have your crank windows and even, you know, these door panel pieces, like on mine, you know, the le littlest bit of moisture gets in there. They start to warp. They start to tear apart from the door card and if they start catching on the door jam. It just, you know, exacerbates more and more. Like my 86 has chips out of this plastic piece here that surrounds your uh, window lever. And none of that is present here. I mean, your dash doesn't look cracked. Now, this is an interesting thing that I never noticed. Look at how this dashboard is like two-tone here. So it's mostly tan, but then you have this darker brown here. And I, just the other day, I think I looked in my green one and sure enough, mine has like kind of a two-tone, like a gray and black going, thing going on. One of those things, it's like, you know, you live in a town your whole life and one day you just drive by a house and you kind of think, oh, I don't really remember that house being there. I never really paid it much attention. So, you know, that's the beauty of the Aerostar is 
there's still more things that sort of jump out at me um, the more and more I see it. And also I, I have to say with, with, with like mint condition cream puff aero stars, you notice these little details more because you're seeing the vehicle as if it was like new off the lot. And that is a really, really special thing. You can see this beautiful transmission lever. Now this looks like the updated transmission. So, the, so the, the standard transmissions in the aero stars, there's two, they're both Mazda units, but I believe they updated it somewhere early on and this looks to have now it's possible they just put a new ball on it but even the shift stock like in my 86 it's skinnier and it has this big kink in it which i actually love but i've always wanted to have a manual transmission aero starter from a later um, model year because the stock is just kind of fatter and it kind of juts out it's not like a uniform width and then it has um, the ball on it instead of mine's like a little bit more squared off and the numbers for the gears are sort of embossed in it. And this one, they're kind of like painted on. So that's a slight little difference. So it seems like by 88, they had upgraded to, um, or just, you know, I don't even know if it's an upgrade per se, but they, they have the more, um, you know, the second generation, I guess you would call it, of the Mazda five-speed manual transmission. I think there's very little differences in those two transmissions, but some um, professional out there could could correct me on that. You can see the three pedals and you have this wonderful little floor mat. I love the brown carpeting in here. It just reminds me of an old shag carpet in like a 70s house or something. One of those pictures you see on Instagram. So, you know, it is a brown interior, but again, we have this wonderful, wonderful variation on a, three, on a theme of monochromatism. So you have your brown upper dashboard and then it fades into a tan. This is more of like a caramel or a gold um, even your seats look slightly different than your door cards and then your brown carpeting, your brown seatbelt stocks, your sort of seat um, riser that this sits on and then your steering wheel is a lighter, almost a camel. And then this ring, now I'm not sure if the ring, the actual wheel itself on the steering wheel is just faded or if it actually had you know, even a little bit more of a tan coloration to it from the factory, that's hard to say. It does look quite uniform in its discoloration quote unquote so maybe that's how it actually was this is so much cleaner uh, identical wheel to my 86 aero star because i had this like sort of tan over brown except my seats for some reason were like the more you know the full headrest seat and those, those are like a dark chestnut brown so just so many different combinations and variations in these aero stars and it's fun to see them all um, but these these vinyl seats. Now I always thought these vinyl seats were only in the in the cargo edition Aerostars. However, this one is definitely a passenger Aerostar, as we'll see in a bit. So here's a little bit more of a head-on front shot, and you can see the beautiful Washington plate. Now just look at the 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 gleaming nature of all this chrome, all your headlight bezels, all your grill. I mean, the bright work on it is in such good condition. The bumper, you can see the light just shining off this bumper, this dark brown bumper with the white, um, you know, color. This I've never seen these brown bumpers either, because a lot of times they'd either be like the flat gray, and on earlier Aero Stars, sometimes you'd see them painted, but they were, um, you know, if it was a two-tone Aero Star, sometimes they'd be the bottom trim color painted or like this dark blue or almost purplish color. This also doesn't have the chrome inserts in here. And I thought the earlier Aerostars had the little chrome inserts in this thing. Um, maybe it didn't, or, you know, it's possible the bumpers were resprayed at some point. That is possible, but just given the original nature of the rest of this Aerostar, I wonder if it just came like this. And obviously the brown on your bumpers accents your sort of tan brown interior very well. Going around to the back again. Now this, now on the back, it does have these little chrome inserts. So maybe they were only on the back. I don't know. Very hard to say. You know, it's it's a like I said, a 30 plus year old vehicle. So it's possible that. And and I will say this this rear bumper does look just a little bit less glossy. So it's possible that the front bumper was re resprayed, and when they resprayed it, they they just sprayed right over these little chrome inserts, or they were taken out before it was sprayed. Just guessing, just doing a little bit of Aerostar sleuthing. Um, but either way, it doesn't really impact, you know, just the incredible, incredible nature of this Aerostar. The other thing I'm gonna say is the Aerostar badge is on the rear here. Now, I thought that the Aerostar badges were on the side up until 89. Um, or maybe even longer up until, you know, the interior refresh happened, I think at 92. So it's possible that in 88, they had already moved these badges to the rear. However, I did not think that was the case. I thought they would still be 
on your um, front quarter panel here, and they are not. Now again, it's possible that this was, you know, resprayed at some point, repainted in that time they moved the logos to the back but when where they got a new tailgate but i don't think so i think it's more likely that that by 88 ford had already sort of switched these things and of course i am showing my ignorance here if i had you know could go on uh wikipedia or something or just you know sort of an aerostar fan site or something like that maybe i could maybe i could find that out but if you happen to know that if you have like an 88 aerostar and you know that your badges are on the back too, then that would be very uh, interesting for me to know. Okay, here's another great shot, a little bit more. We keep getting more and more head on here. And, and you can just see like, you know, the greenhouse on this vehicle, the visibility on the Aerostars is excellent. You have all this glass and all these windows. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful place to be. You're sitting up high, it's still a small vehicle. You can see this big, you know, lump this big hump here that has all your um, gauges in it. And it just, you know, you just, just the fact that you can see so well inside. I mean, even the glass is like just immaculate. I mean, they really did a great job, you know, detailing this vehicle before they took pictures of it, which is quite, um, you know, very much appreciated. Again, you get a little better sense of the, the dark brown on the upper dashboard here. And, um, you know, even just all your vents. Now I do like this because on my, on my 86, this like sort of center console here where the radio would be, you can see how poor, you know, it's funny people are making fun of the cyber truck with the panel gaps and just fit and finish and stuff. This is like the best condition Aerostar you're going to find, especially from, you know, an eighties Aerostar. And you can see how poorly this center console fits in, the, in this dashboard. It's like, this is like, it's like a square peg in a round hole. This is all rounded off here. There's kind of a gap here. This never fits well. This thing just, it just never fit well from the factory. And I think that's just hilarious to see it here, even in this very pristine, no cracks or anything on the dashboard, yet you still see the <laughs> sort of poor quality of how that fit in there. But you know what? Like, if you go look at any like old Maserati or Ferrari from like the 70s, they ne they're never perfectly square, you know? And I'm not sure if that's just because they were like hand built, but you see these little, you know, and to me, it's like the wabi-sabi. Like, I don't want things to be too perfect. I like it to look like it's like a human-made machine. And um, so for me, it's nothing but a positive just to see how everything, you know, it looks like a person built it. And I like that. It gives it this um, organic quality. I know it's weird to say organic with a machine, but it gives it this just very real quality. And it, it doesn't detract at all for me. Um, you can see your dog door cover there. I mean, the carpet is just in fantastic condition and your, you know, every little, again, the seatbelt cover, the brown on that is like more of a chocolate, whereas this is just a slightly lighter. And then you have your tan seats, a great, great shot of the shift lever here. You can see that how, how it widens out. The stock of the shift lever widens out as it goes down. It just looks a little bit more beefy and robust. I wonder how it feels to shift, you know, versus the earlier style um, transmission. Let's go down here a little bit more. We can see our beautiful gauge cluster. And again, mine has like cracks in it. The steering column cover is missing on mine. So all these little things that um, it looks like the gauges actually work, which mine don't. My fuel gauge doesn't work. And the temperature and oil gauges, they kind of work, but you don't really get a sense that they're accurate. The speedometer still works, thank God. 32,000, now it is 132,000, so they're being honest about that. They could have said it's uh, only a 32,000, but you know, if you check the Carfax, you'd probably see it wasn't. So it has rolled over, only a five digit uh, odometer plus tenths here. Uh, I always talk about this. And you know, I had this like sort of revelation the other day that I always make fun of, um, or not make fun of, but sort of like um, revel in the fact that there's no tachometer on these early Aerostars, um, even with a manual transmission. Now, an automatic transmission makes sense. You wouldn't really have it. You wouldn't really need a tachometer. But in a manual transmission, usually you have a tachometer so you can see what your revs at. And I always thought it was so funny because it's like you don't even almost need the numbers for speed on your speedometer either. You could just say like you see the yellow line and it's like okay, like you're driving an Aerostar over 55 miles an hour, like you might want to be careful. And then at 75, it turns red and it's like, hey, like, no, like, like you shouldn't be doing this. Like, yes, the speedometer goes up to 85, but once you hit 75, like high alert, like you are driving an Aerostar at 75, at 75 miles per hour. But then I was thinking, what if 
Now, I, I, this can't be the fact because there's different engines and the different engines must would have had like, you know, especially your four cylinder and your six cylinders would have had, they would have had to have different red lines. But I was thinking, what if the red line, and this seems high anyways, but what if the red line on the engine was actually 7,500 RPM? Wouldn't that be like a genius move that your red line is 7,500 RPM while also somehow being synced up to 75 miles an hour. But of course, that couldn't work because they're two different gauges. So your RPM is never gonna correspond perfectly with your miles per hour. So it's a stupid, <laughs> the more I talk about, it, the more ridiculous that theory <laughs> seems. But for a second, I was like, whoa, what if like somehow the red line was the same as, you know, uh, synced up with a speedometer? But of course that makes no sense. But it, it was just a silly thought that entered my mind. Okay, let's get into the, the rear. Of course, your headliner is immaculate condition, just like no, you know, on mine, the whole front of it is all fallen apart and dented and even on my green one there's scrapes and scratches everywhere it's all you know your all these interior panels are all tight like this stuff you just don't see and if you can find one in this condition you know for six grand like i could spend six grand just redoing the interior of my aerostar to try to get it into near this condition not even you know mind you the exterior so with these vehicles like it's funny because the ceiling and and the floor is relatively close. Like to get a running Aerostar, you're gonna spend like 1,500, two grand, if you're lucky. Now, which is completely reasonable for a running driving car these days. I think there's still a value even at the low end. But then, you know, like if you buy a clapped out Ferrari, right? Like maybe you can get one for like 60, 70 grand, like a busted one. But if you want like the creme de la creme manual transmission top of the line, you're gonna have like such a huge price premium. You're going into like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a really nice one. With the Aerostar, I mean, there was that one I bring a trailer that went for like 14, I think that was an all wheel drive. And that all wheel drive always doesn't carry a premium, but there was like a really nice one that went for like 7,500. This one's being listed at six. It's already gone obviously. So probably someone got it for six or lower. So it really does behoove you to get the best one you can buy. Now that always, or the best one you can afford, that, that always sort of rings true. But in Aerostars particularly like, you like forget restoring any old vehicle for six grand. Like it's just gonna cost you so much more. And then with Aerostars trying to find the bits and pieces, the interior trim and all that to try to find it in the right color and it hasn't been destroyed already. Like you have to buy a donor car. Like, like you, like I bought my Brown Aerostar for 1800 bucks and that was, you know, 10 years ago. And I love it. Like I, I, I love everything about it. I love how janky it is. But if you're going for something really nice, like the value that this car presents for $6,000 is just insane. I mean, it's crazy. These things are so undervalued. And, you know, if I was even a modest um, person of means in the car collecting world, like most people like, oh, you buy a really nice sports car. Maybe you're spending $100,000 on like your dream car, right? Like a, some classic Ferrari or something like that. I mean, for, for, for that amount of money, I could build a museum of cream puff Aerostars. And it just boggles my mind that, that these things are so, um, you know, cheap and, and underappreciated. I mean, look at this transmission. This thing just screams classic. It's got this beautiful interior, those bucket seats. And as we move on, I mean, just look at the, all the carpeting, you know, there's just something about vehicles made in this era where you can't replicate the, the, the building processes. Now it does look like your, is that a little chip in your, maybe that's just how it was designed. The little, um, the bench plastic piece there. These bench seats, by the way, are, are not fun to get in and out of the vehicle. It's a far cry from still and go seating. Um, now, and maybe we're missing the, the, the final bench here. I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually just noticing this in post. There's not like a third bench. Maybe it only came with one. I don't know. Um, can we get any more s pictures? I thought there was another picture. I'm thinking of a different a different listing now, which we'll get to. Um, okay, so you have your, um, you know, your little, uh, this is the classic Ford, the circle with a slash in it. The Ford GT used that logo a lot. So you can see those things go over the hubcaps if you want them in there. Um, looks like maybe we have an aftermarket set. Um, which is interesting. I wonder what that crest says on it, but it comes with the original ones. I mean, the original literature. 
just really, really incredible. As we see it with the back hatch closed and just the condition is amazing. A little tiny crack in the bumper, but sometimes I think that those cracks were actually there from the factory. I think that's just maybe the, the way the piece was made, but I don't see one on the left-hand side. In either case, you know, just, and you can see that just the quality of the glass here, you can just see, you can see right through to the road from the back glass. And when you're in this vehicle, plenty of sunlight coming in. They never made the Aerostar with a moon roof. Um, but, but the thing I was going to say, which I didn't mention, because I thought there was another picture of the back seats in here. Now, maybe I didn't take it, but, um, oh, apologize for that. Um, the fact that the, the, the bench is also vinyl, um, in addition to the, uh, front seats. Now the front seats being in vinyl, I've seen, but even like in my 86, the, the rear bench seat is still cloth. So I've never seen a vinyl rear seat. So the entire vehicle, which maybe this is an XLT, like an upscale package, you actually got the full interior in the, you know, vinyl or leather, whatever you want to call it. It's probably vinyl. But that is really cool because now the Eddie Bauer edition, there were some leather interior aero stars. Those are very rare because I think it was only like the later Eddie Bauer editions. I think the first one still had the cloth seats with the great um, like sort of Christmas tree um, Eddie Bauer iconography. A uh, very, um, you know, legendary design and one that I'm applying to my Jetta, which we'll talk about. But to see the, the vinyl bench seats, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like foreshadowing the next listing that we're going to do, because while I was doing these two, 124 and 125, another amazing Aerostar popped up. So it'll actually be a trilogy of episodes, and we'll do that one next, and, and hopefully I can record it. Um, now, again, spoiler, that one is an archived one too. Thankfully, I archived it, but it has gone, so we'll have to do this similar awkward format. But the point is, we have these three manual transmission sort of uh, early aero stars that are all like in fantastic condition and it's a beautiful little trilogy of episodes so i'm very excited to be doing it so i love the color scheme on this i mean the tan over brown it's just or cream over brown off white over brown we'll say um, the tan interior the vinyl interior the manual transmission the one owner vehicle all the literature just the seals on this. I mean, the rubber seals on this, like everything is so, so nice. So if you bought this Aerostar, please let me know. I would love to talk and see more pictures of it, you know, after the purchase and, and even see some video of it driving, yada, yada, yada. But just a, just a really incredible cream puff Aerostar. And um, you will not find another one quite like this. That's what I love about the Aerostars too and, and how, why I equate them to other classics because the exterior color, the interior color, the, the, the combination of the exterior and interior, every one is a little bit different, especially these early ones. And they're so special to me. And this, you know, off-white with the, the saddle, we'll call it, interior, the, you know, tan over brown interior, the, you know, the, the, this, this looks like such a luxury vehicle. I mean, the wall to wall carpeting with the beautiful quality of the seats. This was a very nicely appointed vehicle in 1988. I mean, really like this was a very, very nice place to be. And you don't truly realize that until you sit in one or see one. That's like, you know, this time capsule and you can appreciate how nice they were when they were new beautiful little Aerostar badge on the dashboard. That's, I mean, this is like the same exact location as the Bertoni badge in my X19, which is a little sports car. So just like the great Aerostar iconography everywhere, the little badges and everything, the little details. I love the way this, um, this vent, the sort of fins of it roll up and curl over on the dashboard line with the dashboard. I mean, there's just these little styling cues in here, this little uh, triangle window, little styling cues in the Aerostar that I think our, even the door release is a very like sort of unconventional thing. And it's, it's kind of, it's pretty ergonomic too. You know, you just reach the door handle that you're going to push it open with anyways. And you just press your hand down and open it up. So many little cool uh, designs and details on the Aerostar and, and the eighties ones in particular, I really have a fondness for because it was kind of like the Aerostar in it's, you know, most pure form, I guess you could say. Now it looks like maybe our radio antenna is gone there too. So, you know, noticing little things here and there, 
but um, you know the original grill I really love. I mean, I love the later ones too, and and you could argue that they're maybe a little bit more reliable or powerful or whatever it is. They made more of them. Obviously, the extended, the four wheel drive. I just had a comment, wonderful comment. I'm sorry I forgot your name, but they're they're they've they have the world's only four wheel drive manual transmission Aerostar using like some components from a Ford Sport Track. We've been going back and forth a little bit. I want to know more about that, but that's that's incredible. And I love what Aerostar owners are doing. I just responded to a bunch of comments. Janky do thank you to everyone who's commented. And I still have some mail to send out and I'm always behind and I apologize, but I, I really do appreciate everyone writing and commenting. And I love just exploring this giant universe of Aerostardom and following the rabbit hole and seeing how deep it goes. And, I, and I'm learning things every day about it and I'm seeing new Aerostars that I you know, never thought would, would still be in this good condition. Um, so it's just such a joy and a pleasure to document these things and create like this compendium. And then I had a couple other comments that were like, this guy blathers on too much and like, what's, I don't get it. It's just a boring minivan. And those comments are welcome too. You know, it's like, look at, look at how big this latch mechanism is, by the way. <laughs> That's like before nanotechnology, but everything's so solid. Even this like little handle, this pull handle is great. So you can pull it closed from the inside, little stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, like, and that's the whole point of this series, right? Like this is just a boring 90s minivan to 98% of people out there. And my job is sort of like to say, hey, like look at this thing. Like there, there's a lot going on here. And when this thing came out, it was such a revolutionary vehicle. And I know it's just a minivan and Dodge had theirs and uh, Chevy had theirs. But for whatever reason, I gravitate towards the Aerostar. I just think it has that little je ne sais quoi that puts it over the top. All these little design cues, all these, I mean, the advertising, the marketing around it, the name, the Aerostar, like it's just this, the aerodynamics, the, the, the emphasis on the drag coefficient, which is also ahead of its time, because now like the drag coefficient is everything, and especially in like electric cars and stuff like that. The fact that the Aerostar was an electric car, if you watch my Tesla Cybertruck Aerostar comparison, they made two electric Aerostars in 1986, and I mean, this thing was so aspirational. It really was pointing towards the future. The great Haggerty article talks about how it was kind of the precursor to the crossover because it was kind of this do anything vehicle. Like you really can't categorize it as a car, a truck or a van. It has elements of all three. And it's at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's an Aerostar. And there was only one generation. It lasted from 86 until 97. The body style may, you know, remained the same the entire time. They made over 2 million of them in Hazelwood, Missouri, American made. And it's just an absolute legend. And they're so darn cheap if you want to get into the classic car game. I mean, you show up to a Cars and Coffee with this thing. With any Aerostar, it'll get attention. But with this thing, with the manual transmission, see how crispy and pristine the interior is. It's just such an underrated vehicle. And, um, you know, except to those people who are kind of in the know. And there's some great Aerostar uh facebook groups out there there's there's there is a, a a lively aerostar community and people obviously appreciate them many people who own an aerostar own multiple aerostars many people have owned dozens of aerostars the great jason is an example and so you know it, it, you know i lived for a while in buffalo new york on four separate occasions actually and buffalo is sort of like this you know it's like it's like you almost want to preserve and protect the secret. It's like this very underrated um, town that maybe gets like sort of a bad reputation, but the people that live there and know it realize all the great things that it has to offer. And I feel like the Aerostar is very similar. The, the people that know, know. And, um, you know, so in addition to sort of educating people and trying to introduce more people to the Aerostar, we're also preaching to the choir a little bit and just, you know, enjoying some some fine examples of this fantastic, fantastic spaceship on wheels. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that episode. I sure did. Nice to be back. It's been a while. I've, I've cleaned up my entire space. There'll be a new My Janky Life coming out where I delve into some of that. We have an art show coming up. 
the wheels are always moving. In addition to that, I'm trying to run a business and be a good uh, life partner to my sweetheart and care for animals and, you know, care for my extended family and my family. Blah, 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 blah. This guy rambles on too much. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we will have another year of the Aerostar coming up very soon here on Janky AF. And until then, Janky do thank you. Yeah.